Yeah. Last person to sit down buys dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Peter. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> I just want to respond to the question about the focused secret document. And uh, yes, we can do a focused secret document, but we're not in a position today to, to you know, sort of dictate what, what those areas are. We would need to go through the scoping process to determine what are the issue areas and how, um, and, and how to address. So it's not something that you as a board could say, only look at these areas. We have to go through yeah. the process uh, if we move forward with the CEQA on this to identify what those areas are. And then we would focus our um, analysis on those, those specific issues that are relevant to the project. Then if we ha how would we handle this vote today then? It's a matter of does it apply or doesn't. It, you know, is it subject to CEQA or is it not? And then could we give instructions to develop a focus CEQA at the end of it? I think well, to, to the degree you're giving the very limited direction to, to, fo to do a focus CEQA review, that would be okay. What Peter is saying is you can't dictate what, you're fo what you are uh, focusing out. Don't tell them. We could just uphold this and ask our environmental review to do a focus CEQA in the process. Is that correct? Right, right. You're not making any determinations about what you're focusing in. Right, and I don't even know that I'm the one that's qualified to do that, and nor am I insinuating that. Uh, right. uh, but we could, and that makes sense to me. If if we were to uh, to do a, a full blown CEQA, it could be basically render the project uh, tough. I'm not to sure that that you're necessarily. If, if the concern is saving time by saying we're going to do a focused um, analysis, um, the the process is more or less the same. What we don't, what we wouldn't have to do is study something that's clearly ir irrelevant. The spotted owl habitat, for instance. Yes. Right. Um, so anything that is clearly yeah. relevant to the operation of an asphalt plant at this location, we would have to look at, analyze, and come up with alternatives and you know all the requirements of CEQA, depending on the type of document that we feel is appropriate. So you're telling me a focus CEQA won't be any shorter investment of time? It eliminates unnecessary studies on something that clearly is not applicable to the project. But procedurally, you have to go through the same process. So it could save you time. It, it would save in cost of not having to study something that's not relevant. Um, and it probably would streamline review to some degree because we wouldn't be looking at comments on something that's not relevant. Um, but anything that is relevant, we still have to go through the same public review process draft, comment period, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So my comments are, um, I got a question about the equipment still. Um, you know, because the emission standards are extremely important, I think, to everybody uh, around the area and in the room. Um, I, I tried. I, I pulled up the model number of uh, the equipment and uh, studied it as much as I could. I know the year of it and all that. Um, what I read is it has uh, alarms and um, different things that um, alert you, uh, like Joe was uh, Joe was talking about, and I'm glad he brought that up. Um, It'll tell you when it's not running efficient, and it, uh, it is very efficient from what I can see, but it, it'll tell you if something is wearing out or if it's not running efficient or if there's a mix that's wrong or something, you know. Uh, it's, it's not like the older uh, style equipment that had no controls on it. It's actually very controlled. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, if I can. I mean, I'm no expert on all the engineering and the internal workings, but effectively, it is self-monitoring on thousands of different things that are going on. It's all basically computer automated. The control house uh, resembles more like an air traffic control tower if you go in it. Um, if temperatures, any kinds, I mean, there's hundreds of sensors monitoring everything at all times. Um, and I, 
couldn't begin to tell you everything they do monitor. Um, I'd be lying if I did. But <clears throat> it does and it will, it can institute automatic shutdowns. There's alarms for an infinite number of things. When it's in operation, um, basically the machine knows he was talking about where and when does it wear out and things of that nature. Uh, maintenance recommendations from the manufacturer, um, uh, the computer systems, it's, it's, everything's automated. The, the plants resemble nothing of the old plants where you pull this lever and hold on until the rock gets done and that's all gone. You start to plant up, you hit start with a computer, it knows what you're making and it just slowly progressively starts everything and starts the monitoring progress. As far as all the emissions and all of that, those are monitored too, ongoing with the computer systems. There's logs we have to keep by law during all operation. Uh, Caltrans there again, they actually take it one step more if we're producing for Caltrans. There's a different log reports on, on infinite number of items that they require. And Caltrans does most of that anymore simply to keep them out of trouble um, for purchasing mix if we were breaking the rules, so to speak. Um, it, I don't know if that helps, um, but as far as the automation and the monitoring and the alarms, everything is watched like a hawk. When you program um, set rates, whether it's temperatures, um, some of the emission factors, the bag house controls, the suction, um, everything's monitored. Anything goes wrong, alarms go off, recordings are made, it shows those recordings. Um, and they're reportable. You betcha. There's reports that we have to have on file and we have to keep them, I don't know how many years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So as far as I can see, um, here, here's the way I've seen this whole thing. Um, it was a set of circumstances, in my opinion, that um, somebody come in and want to open up this plant, right? I think they could have done a way better job on uh, informing the community. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it obviously uh, could have been controversial right from the get-go. There's no doubt you know it would have been. Um, and I'll give you an example. When, when uh, like Mark Twain Medical Center comes in, they came in, they did a pre-application through planning. All right, that kind of opened it up for everybody to see. And, but I got to tell you that I also uh, went to planning and said, hey, you know, this is an economic development uh, opportunity here, and please, let's put this on, uh, put this uh, uh, ahead of whatever else that we can in order to process it as quickly as possible because these folks have timelines on um, uh, funding and, and all kinds of other things, right? Uh, doesn't mean that we, we, need, we can cir circumvent anything. That is not possible because I'll tell you right now, that man right there and that man right there will tell me to go fly a kite. And I love that about them. That's what I like about them. And so uh, uh, they're not afraid to do that. And so, um, so I think that uh, we just got started off on the wrong foot. People got scared. Uh, there was some um, information that went out that I don't think is correct at all. Uh, scary stuff. And the, um, the old asphalt plants uh, are different than the newer uh, technical high-tech stuff you know like this phone right I mean uh, 20 years ago we weren't carrying this around and so um, there's a lot of difference there's a lot of difference in our vehicles there's a lot of difference in um, our generators like uh, Brian can attest our equipment everything is moving towards more efficiencies and easier on the environment and uh, that's that's a focus it's a focus for all of us um, I think that um, I think that uh, a, lot of, a lot of people got uh, scared and then it takes on its own energy and it becomes uh, uh, more uh, uh, frightening and uh, I'm pissed type thing. And then we are in a position to where nobody's going to listen to anything and we are here now and that's what gets people riled up. If we could have sat in this room right from the get go and said, hey, you know what, this is what we're going to do or in a room, it doesn't matter. 
uh, with Ford and uh, hashed out some things and got it all working together, it probably would have went a little differently and we wouldn't be dividing side, dividing uh, um, um, issues and dividing sides and going through all of this mess. Uh, this mess is expensive for the county, very expensive. And um, um, I feel that uh, the project is, 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 uh, uh, is good for the county, um, but it has to be good for the neighbors. And it has to be good for, for the, the, the people uh, in the area too. There's concerns. Truck traffic is, is a concern. Although I seen this big old propane truck come down the hill the other day, uh, yesterday, towards my restaurant, like a big missile, and that scared the heck out of me, you know. But but you know what? That they do that, and, and um, I think that things kind of get blown out of a proportion, and then um, and now it's up to us to bring it back into proportion and work with this and see what we can do as efficiently as possible as a county as a community and um, as a potential company that wants to come in here and um, and do business. I don't see anything wrong with doing business in the county. Now as a, as a business person, um, if I were to choose to do something like this, uh, just like I did when I opened up my place, I went out and I swooned a bunch of people first. I let them know who I was. I uh, shook hands and I continue to get involved uh, and uh, for many years now and I try to do my best for the community too and that's what makes me a, a good neighbor and, and a, uh, um, in my opinion a, you know pretty open-minded type person I care about people I care about the environment and I care about business people because that's what pays our bills and keeps our schools open as well so, um, as a business person, I would choose to uh, say, hey, you know, I got this, uh, this high-tech piece of equipment. Uh, we're going to open this up. We're going to open this business up and um, um, come on out and check it out. We're going to start working. We start working. And, oh, by the way, if I step out of, the line, out of line or if I... Uh, if I am not meeting your standards, too bad for me. That's my wasted investment. And so, uh, but to, to arbitrarily put roadblocks and cause time and money to any business that wants to come into this county with maybe no reason, is is like shutting it down. Okay, you can say it after me. Okay. Just like, you just you broke my whole mood. I think. I was, I was breaking his stride. He broke Sorry. he broke my uh, stride. So so um, uh, you know, I'm just trying to make sense of this thing. I I just see a bunch of uh, grenades that got thrown into it. I don't think anybody really intended to uh, create all of this. I think that everybody cares, um, and um, I think that 20 years ago would be a whole different story because uh, we didn't have the technology and equipment that we do nowadays. Today, it's a different ball game, and California State is tough. We all know that, um, and in a lot of cases, we have uh, rules that are outdated. And, and regulations that need to be updated so that so that we could actually be the all that we can be and be the best that we can be yeah, at what we do and so um, having said all of that um, I'm looking at uh, a 2007 authority to construct that was uh, issued and um, I would, I got to support, uh, uh, support um, the appeal. So I just wanted to, you know, 
um, you know, I've been involved in lots of land use disputes over the years in, in many different capacities, um, you know, even before I became supervisor. And, you know, they, they tend to follow kind of a, a set routine when there's controversy or if it's a larger process. And I can see that that's what we're on right now. You know, we're basically, we're going, you know, step by step. Eventually, we're going to end up in the courts one way or another. Um, and so, and at the end of the, end of the day, everybody, I mean, the attorneys actually do okay, you know, because they get paid. Um, but, uh, but a lot of times, the citizens and the, and the businesses are both hurt by that process. And that's because we tend to, you know, go like this. Um, so... I, I don't know if we can do this at this point or if anybody wants to, but, you know, why don't we try something different? Um, you know, why don't we try uh, to step back, say we're not going to make a decision on this today, and uh, we're not going to move forward with the, the Planning Commission uh, meeting on Thursday. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some mediation, uh, form an ad hoc group uh, with, uh, you know, I'm going to volunteer Steve Kearney because that's his district. Um, uh, or thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, you know, uh, I'm willing to do it. But uh, uh, but I, I don't want to step on Steve's toes. Uh, so uh, and and members from uh, the proponent, uh, members of the uh, the citizens that are here, uh, some staff, and we sit down. Uh, maybe get a, a you know a mediator. That'd be a lot cheaper than where, where we're headed. Sit down and see if we can actually hash out some of these issues like uh, Cliff was saying, around a room. Just kind of hit, you know, restart. I mean, I know it doesn't ever happen like that in the process. No process I've ever seen has done that. But is there any reason not to try something different? Because we can always start again and be like, okay, well, now we're going back to the laws, uh, lawsuits, because that's, that's where we're headed. So that's my, um, you know, out of the box thinking uh, for today. And I don't know if any of your board members um, you know, or anybody else wants to do it, but that's that's my uh, that's my idea. Well, that was way different than what you said a little while ago. That's good. Yeah, well, I'm open mind. You know, I changed my mind. It's it's not a bad idea, really. But I, is there a legal? I, I would want to. Um, check with um, county council as well, but the, the appellants here have a right to have this hearing. Well, that's what I was thinking. Right. But I mean, they could, they could waive that, right, if they wanted to sit down and do a mediation process and still come back to it uh, at a later date. Can we take five minutes? <laughs> Two or five. Thank you for your about that. That's Yeah. Okay, I think Are we on a break? Yeah. Sorry. Um, Bill Abbott, Abbott and Kinderman. Um, to respond to Vice Chair's suggestion, there are many times in which what you outlined. Apparently, so do we. Are we good? Okay. Well, in case you don't know, I'm Bill Abbott. I can spell that. Um, no, I uh, do appreciate the suggestion. There are times when that is an appropriate strategy. You know, my, name, uh, my clients did conduct a neighborhood uh, out, outreach uh, meeting. Uh, the feedback from that doesn't doesn't necessarily give them the feeling that calling a halt in these proceedings to start this mediation process would necessarily be the best choice. So it, it's not that it won't happen and can't happen, but to ask us tonight to make the call, uh, would, uh, we appreciate the suggestion, but we're going to call, we would ask for the vote. Yeah. Okay. Thank Great. you. Well, thank you. All right. All right, so um, we're on board discussion, board discussion still. Okay. So uh, anybody else want to make a motion? Or anybody else want to have any comments? 
Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, could you dictate the issue so we can properly structure it? Yeah, the issue. issue really is, is it ministerial or discretionary. discretionary? Or discretionary. That's the issue, really. And it uh, doesn't mean that, um, from what I understand, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, even if it's, it doesn't mean that it, if it's discretionary, if it's, it's still would be a big full-blown thing. It just means that there will be, it will trigger SQL, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it'll trigger uh, an initial study. Is that correct, Tiffany? Correct. Okay. All right. And that dictates as to what the course is. All right. If we uphold the Planning Commission's decision. Correct. So the form of the motion would be to uphold the Planning Commission's decision or to deny the Planning Commission's decision? No. The, actually, it's, uh, it's to... Uh, Uphold the appeal by Ford. Okay. Ford. No, 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 no. no. Is Denied. that wrong? Wrong. Right. Okay. Deny the appeal. Bye. Go ahead. I, I think the yeah, the <laughs> options would be to um, That's what you get for now. deny the appeal, uphold the planning commission's action, or to approve the appeal, thereby reversing the planning commission's action. Right. If that is your decision, I don't know what it's going to be. Um, I, we have a draft resolution for you for the um, denial of the appeal. We do not have a resolution in front of you for uh, approval of the appeal and reversing. And I would recommend that you uh, declare your intent and then continue it for two weeks so we can bring back a formal resolution for adoption if that right. is the course of action you choose to take. Because we don't have anything available at this point in time, I would want to try to craft it on the fly. And, and Peter, just to be clear, I, I, because there has been some question, if the board is finding that it is discretionary, then they are upholding the planning commission's, commission's decision. decision. If they're finding uh, it is ministerial, they're upholding the appeal. Is that correct? correct. That's correct. correct. Got it now? I do. I think. All right. well, you want to make a motion? I can't. Oh, you can't. Well, I, I'll, I'll make the motion that we uphold the appeal and deny the Planning Commission's position. Is that a correct form? That would be correct. That would I, be. If you believe it's a minister. If you want. If you I believe, believe it's a minister. Right. I second the motion. Yeah, so I can't do that one after I found out more stuff. So, so I need another. Um, we need a call, need for the vote. Need a call for the vote. I a call for the yeah, vote. so can I have a uh, call for a vote, please? Aye. Aye. Okay. No. 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 Yeah, I make a motion to. Um, deny uh, the appeal and approve the Planning Commission's uh, determination that this is a discretionary uh, judgment. I'll second. Okay, got a, a motion by Supervisor Wright, second by Supervisor Pondy. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Who, how many eyed? Four. Four eyes, one no. That's it. Okay. Excuse me. Explain English. What does that mean? Habla inglés. Hold on. We'll let Peter uh, Peter wrap it up here. So the board upheld the planning commission's determination that the issuance of an authority to construct is subject to CEQA. All right. Did and you get Did you get that? Sorry. I, I didn't hear. Yeah. The issuance of, a, of an authority to construct is subject to CEQA. Yes. Okay. Uh, was, uh, four eyes. There was uh, uh, Supervisor Pawnee, Supervisor Kearney, Supervisor Wright, and myself. 
and one no, Supervisor Oliveira. Thank you, sir. All right, so let's. <laughs> hey, just in case you want to know, we still have a meeting going on, okay? So we got item 14. Item number 10. 10. Oh, 10. Sorry. Forgot <laughs> about item 10. I make a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Any public comment? <laughs> item number 10, board. Uh, or no, no, where's it? Across the board chair, sir. <laughs> Item number 10. Authorized board chair to sign a letter of support for Mark Twain Healthcare District's construction of a new medical a new clinic in Valley Springs. Any public comments? Yes. Yay. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, are you guys through with your public comments there? Can, can I move on? You want I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is the kind of industry and business that we welcome wholeheartedly to have a, have a health center in Valley Springs. We may need one real quick. If an uh, asphalt factory goes in there, we may need one tomorrow. So let's not hold up anything on this positive um, community effort kind of thing that is going to look well upon the community. It's going to look well upon, I mean, it's going to look well about the Board of Supervisors making a decision. And something we desperately need is more health care, because I'm telling you, for 10 years I drove to Stockton and Sacramento to get things as simple as a bone set. You can't get any orthopedic or, or, or any of those kind of things locally if you're uh, on welfare, if you're uh, Medi-Cal, you got to go 50, 70, 80 miles to get the simplest of um, services. So, yay. Well, by the way, Bonnie, they're, yes. they're going to have an asphalt uh, parking lot. Just want to let you know that. There's what? I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> I said they're going to have an asphalt parking lot. That's fine. Okay, thanks. We don't mind an asphalt parking lot. We just don't want it cooking in our backyard. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, any other um, <laughs> any other public comments? Board? I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, we got a motion by Supervisor Wright, second by Supervisor Ponte. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And if you guys don't mind, I would like to leave uh, carryover Actually, I have, a, I have a statement I need to make. Go ahead. On 14. <coughs> okay. So, um, uh, just wanted to there's make a quick statement here. Um, I just want to say it's been a true honor and a privilege to serve as District 2 Supervisor. However, I've decided not to run for re-election next year. I'm notifying everyone early on about this, so everyone on all sides of the political map can prepare for next year's campaign. I look forward to s focusing on the issues of the district and the county without distraction of the campaign and will continue to work hard until the end of my term in December 2016. Once again, thank you to all those who supported me in the past. It's been a true honor to serve. Well, thank you, Chris. It's been an honor to serve with you, actually. Same here. Same here. Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, anybody uh, else want to do their comments? I just have a couple. Um, tomorrow I'm attending an EMS meeting in uh, Copperopolis in the American Legion Open House Thursday in um, Jackson. And uh, attended a COG meeting last Wednesday. And one of the issues that will be forthcoming to us will be um, a modification to our JPA agreement to meet at an earlier hour versus later. Um, we will be, uh, um, information will be forthcoming. We have to change our JPA in regards to the meeting time. Um, and so they'll be bringing that forward and that also will have to have some approval from the City of Angels one way or the other. The other is that we appointed a citizen member to COG. And because this particular citizen member that we selected lives in the West Point area, 
um, apparently within our JPA, we have to have our individual entities give approval to that so that it is not, how do I say this, so that we ensure that COG board is um, well represented throughout the county. Um, so not one area of the county is more, um, uh, what do I want to say, Heavily represented related. or whatever. So anyway, that particular member will also uh, be forthcoming to this board for approval as well as the City of Angels. Who is it? Um, Justin Catalano, I think if I mispronounce his name. Um, he applied six months ago or so and um, we had another applicant. That applicant dropped out. He interviewed. There was some concern about his ability to serve, experience, etc. He was told to get involved, get to know a little bit more about COG. Uh, this go around for public, we had three public mem three public members for two openings, and uh, this go around he was selected as the permanent position, and then we selected an alternate. Um, but his particular position, because of his residing in the West Point Wilseyville area, it was making sure that there was balance on the board. So we'll be hearing that. Um, I was told within the next 30, 30 days or so, we'll be having that information brought back to this board. And that's yeah. all I have. Okay. Yeah. Michael? I, I, uh, I continue to improve uh, health-wise, and that has prevented me from attending some meetings, but I am scheduled to attend a meeting tomorrow at 9 o'clock with our planning department uh, regarding one of our constituents' uh, issues. Uh, I did attend the White Pines Christmas Parade Committee, something new, first annual. Uh, we're starting up in District 3. Uh, I will be uh, attending my, my duties as committee uh, member for my various committees starting hopefully next week after I'm able to reschedule some follow-up medical appointments. Um, regarding the COG issue, uh, I, I, I was informed that District 3 has no representative on COG at this time, but I do understand that that issue is going to be uh, addressed when this issue comes up before the Board of Directors. Okay. Steve? Uh, <laughs> I know, it looks like mine too. Yeah, really. Um, I attended uh, the Gold Country Shooters dinner. Um, I was glad to see a bunch of great young athletes. Uh, it's a, a good program. Uh, I also uh, had the real pleasure of attending uh, uh, a performance by Sea Stars in the Bret Hart uh, Auditorium and saw them perform Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. We should be very proud of our uh, youth in this county. They do a, a, a a lot of good things, and we need to make sure that they get credit for that, and I was glad to be there. Uh, we had a meeting of the CSA 1 committee in Rancho Calaveras. Uh, we're starting to really uh, get some feedback from the public on traffic studies and where to improve our roads, and uh, it's really, really going along. I'm proud to see that. <coughs> I also uh, sat with uh, uh, Supervisor Pawnee on the COG board. Uh, it's always uh, a learning experience every time you're there, and it's a very full impact agenda. Uh, on Thursday, I attended a JPA 12 meeting in uh, Jackson as the uh, board member for that. I'm looking forward to bringing more, more services uh, for senior citizens to the county. I'm working on that. And Friday, I... Uh, went to a Commission on Aging meeting. That's always a, a very informative time and uh, I always look forward to it because they, they give me a lot more than I bring to the table and it's a, a, a real, real good experience to sit with them. And there's so many other little things in between time and if I'm lucky tomorrow I'll have time to go see another landfill but still yeah, working on that. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Hmm? That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to report out real quick. Uh, we're going with Jeff Krovitz tomorrow to see, uh, check out a landfill. I don't even know where it is. Where is it? Manteca. He's driving, so <laughs> hopefully he'll buy lunch too. I think it's called um, Forward Landfill. Um, and uh, 
Also, uh, I've been working pretty hard on the Calvers Has Talent. Uh, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was grueling. Uh, and, you know, um, Steve was talking about uh, being proud of the, uh, young people. If you get a chance to go see this, uh, by the way, I'm, I, I moved on to the semifinals, so I get to go. But uh, um, Barbara Yook's daughter, Tegan, holy cow, man. Uh, she started singing, I started crying. So uh, the girl is uh, phenomenal. Uh, there's uh, another little 10 year old guy that plays drums that is, you know, it's unbelievable. Uh, Sherry Roosh's uh, son, Hunter, uh, 16 years old, learned how to play guitar himself, learned how to sing himself, and he wrote a song and he competed and he moved on out of 34 uh, contestants. 34. So there were six, six youth and six adults that moved on. Um, so uh, the next uh, quarterfinal is in at Bret Hart this weekend, and that's uh, for for that for the south end of the county. Uh, from five until nine on Saturday, it is definitely worth going. There's a lot of activity, a lot of people having fun. It's a really really good time, uh, and it is supporting the music programs in Calaveras County, the whole county. Um, Neil Yamervik is uh, uh, pushing this thing pretty hard. Uh, it's called uh, CalaverasYouth.org. That's the nonprofit that they created for it, and um, just great people working there. Uh, the sem semifinal will be the 29th at uh, Fairgrounds, and then the final will be on October 10th at the Fairgrounds. So that's all I'm going to report out. Thank you for uh, your involvement today. We appreciate you coming. Anybody else? Nope. Mr. Chair, I have one, one thing I'd like to point out. Um, in Friday's uh, Calaveras Enterprise, there was an article that seemed to imply that the planning department had sort of a major uh, disagreement with the uh, IT uh, division, and um, there was some misunderstanding on my part uh, when I reported to the planning commission about some um, concerns I had about our ability to communicate with the public uh, with regard to our website. Um, I met with the uh, IT team and we worked out those discrepancies and I think it was unfortunate that the article sort of implied that there was a major issue. You know, it was uh, some more, more misunderstanding on my part. So I just wanted to let you guys know that in case you'd seen that article. Um, Stan and I get along really well. We work well together and um, we've resolved the concern I had about our ability to communicate public so it's resolved thank you Peter I appreciate that take pictures so I can see them huh? take pictures so I can see them